Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to take a look at finding the tension in a string when the acceleration is not known. We know that the tension always can be found by the following equation, that the tension is equal to mg minus ma if the object is accelerating downward, or tension equals mg plus ma when the acceleration is upward. But how do we do it for a case like this? And what do we do when the object is sideways like this, when it's being pulled by the string right here in the horizontal direction? And there's no mg involved in that case at all. Well, this is what we do. Whenever the acceleration is not known, you must find the acceleration first. Secondly, once acceleration is known, then you can find out what the tension is on both sides of the string. However, you always need to make sure you realize this, that if the pulley involved has no mass and has no friction, then T1 must equal T2. So if the pulley has no mass and no friction, then we know that the tension T1 must equal T2. Now you may say, a pulley with no friction? How can, oh, I should say, a pulley with no mass, how can that be? And a pulley with no friction, is that even possible? Well. We can say that the pulley has so little mass that we can ignore it and has so little friction that we can ignore it. That's really what we're saying here. And if that's the case, we can say that the tension on both sides here is the same. Ultimately, this is the same string. And the only thing that could change the tension between this portion of the string and this portion of the string is if the pulley has mass or has friction. So what we can then do is we can look at this part of the problem. And if we draw a free body diagram here, we can assume that this object will be pulling this object and making the whole thing accelerate this way. So we can assume that there's going to be an acceleration in this direction, which means we're going to be utilizing this equation right here. And we can say that T2 is equal to M2G, the weight of this object, minus M2A, which is the acceleration of the entire system. Because whatever the acceleration is for the small block should be the acceleration of the big block as well. The only thing left to do, because if we know what M2 is equal to, we need to find A, and then we can find the tension. Once we find T2, we also know what T1 is equal to. How do you find the acceleration? Well, we have lots of videos to show you the examples, but in short, what we can do there to find the acceleration is to assume a free body diagram about the entire system, like this. And then look at all the forces acting on the system, which would exclude any forces internal to the system, such as the tension of the string right here. If we do that, we, we then realize that the forces acting on this is the force of gravity acting on block number one, which is M1G, and then the table pushing back with an equal and opposite force N, which is also equal to M1G, just in the opposite direction. And since those cancel each other out, then there's no net force in the vertical direction here. Let's say that mu is equal to zero, so there's no friction force at all. So there's no external force acting on M1 causing any sort of acceleration to the system. Here we can say that there is a force due to gravity called M1g in this direction, and then there's no other force opposing that. Well, we know there's tension here, but that's internal to the system, so we can simply ignore it. Now we can say that the net force on the whole system, net force F net, is equal to mass total times acceleration of the system. The net force is only one, which is M1g, is equal to the total mass, which is the sum of the two masses. And did I say M1g? Oh, that's wrong here. This is M2g. Good thing that I caught that. This is M2, this is M1 right there. So let's call this M2g. M2g equals the, to the total sum of the two masses times acceleration, or the acceleration is equal to M2g divided by M1 plus M2. Once we determine the acceleration, then we can plug that in here, and we can solve for T2. And of course, once we know T2, we can solve for T1. There's another way to solve for T1 once we know what the acceleration is. We can draw a free body diagram around just this portion of the system. If I redraw that over here, if I come over here and I redraw that, I have the mass, M2, and, oh, I call it M1, I got my subscripts wrong here, M1, and I have the tension here, let's call that T1. 
drawing all the forces now on that part of the system alone, we do know that we have an M1G pulling down. We have a normal force pushing back up, which is equal to M1G. And then we have the, the force here, tension one in this direction. Notice that these two forces will cancel each other out. We only have one net force on the, this part of the system, just what I have in the box right there. If we now use Newton's second law that says F net is equal to mass times acceleration, and in this case, the net force would be uh, the tension right here, T1 is equal to the mass, which in this case is M1 times acceleration. Since we know what the acceleration is, from that we can also find T1. So there's another way to find T1 independent of realizing that T1 equals T2. So whenever you have a situation where an, a system is accelerating, and you want to find the tension in the strings keeping objects within the system together, then what you need to do is find the acceleration first. Once you have the acceleration, then if it's a hanging object, you can use these, one of these two equations. If it's a horizontal object, then you can use something approach that looks like this. And that's how we find the tension in strings when the acceleration is not known.